Just give me a reason to keep my heart beating. Don't worry, it's safe right here in my arms. As the world falls apart around us, all we can do is hold on. What is up guys, DT Ninja here to bring you my analysis on Kaguya Otsutsuki. Now, this is going to be a specific video about her and this will give you guys a better understanding of her, okay? I'm not going to go into a whole lot of facts, you know, uh, things that you already know. I want to give you guys an idea of my thoughts on what Kaguya is and what her actual, you know, ambitions were and what I feel Kishimoto was trying to convey by showing her uh, as this villain, okay? And actually, I don't believe she's actually a villain. Uh, she's just misunderstood. So, yeah, anyways, um, so I split up the analysis into seven parts. Uh, so we're going to start off with origins, okay? So first we're going to go off with the origins of the folklore, okay? So Kaguya, the actual name, comes from folklore. And it comes from the story, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. And she's a princess. She's Princess Kaguya. So she is this, you know, princess. And she supposedly comes down from the heavens and she ends up in a bamboo shoot, okay? And they're very small, right? So uh, this bamboo cutter and his wife, they, they find this girl and she's really tiny, right? So they, they think, you know, it's very unique. So they adopt her as, her own, as their own child. She grows up, you know, she, you know, obviously gets bigger and bigger. And, you know, she eventually becomes a very beautiful woman. And she has many people that want to, you know, uh, court her. So you have all these people, you know, wanting to be with her. And there's this very interesting thing because she's from the moon. She's from the moon. So she's not human. Uh, but at the same time, people really, you know, like her, really like her. And there's this, there's this uh, thing when the full moon comes... Uh, apparently, when in the light shines on her, you know, she kind of goes away. She goes away. So, it goes back to, you know, her origins, you know, as um, her species, you know, as, you know, not of this world. So, anyways, that's the, the folklore tale. It comes from Kaguya and the Bamboo Cutter. Now, I highly recommend you watch the Ghibli version. Now, Ghibli is... Miyazaki's Legacy Studio, okay? Now, I want you to take a look at this scan because the, the movie came out a couple years ago and it has won several awards. So definitely, I highly recommend you watch this movie because Kaguya, the Princess Kaguya was very well done, very well done. So take a look. All right, as you guys can see, you know, the animation looks great. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend you check that out uh, just to see, you know, where uh, Kishimoto's, you know, inspirations are coming from and this from this folklore. All right, so the origins from Naruto. Now, I did the whole thing on the Shinobi Well-Informed Record. Uh, that was in my data book file that I gave a few years back. Now, a couple years back. So... You know, I'm kind of, you know, repeating what I said, but at the same time, I'm not going to repeat the entire thing. I'm kind of giving you my own words uh, from what I read in the data book and everything. But I will be giving you some examples throughout, you know, some examples, some scans, some, you know, uh, pictures from, you know, the anime this past week. And, you know, overall, what I feel about Kaguya. So, the origins from Naruto. So... They are the Otsutsuki clan, okay? And they are f not from this world. They're from another world, okay? So they came to uh, the the Earth, okay? To the ninja world, uh, Kaguya did, and in search 
of the divine tree. Now, uh, this is clear, okay? Because in the anime, we see it. You know, there's this, this light that shines, and it's the tree. And, you know, something crashes, lands, like, on there, and it looks like the tree. Uh, but it actually says that the reason the tree uh, kind of formed was because the blood of man. So the fighting of man kind of brought the tree into existence. That's what it says. Uh, but in in the anime we see it's like a crash landing almost from another world. So could it possibly be that, you know, this tree is from their world, you know? Something along those lines, uh, at least in the anime's perspective. Um, anyways, they're in search of the divine fruit and this divine tree. So Kaguya comes to, you know, the ninja world and she's right right away she's very you know beautiful right she's very beautiful you see pictures of her and you know a lot of people want to be with her but there's this this idea of you know being terrified because she's like this the celestial being that just came from the heavens right so there's this fear and you know what is she you know how powerful is she you know is she, can we trust her so this one guy, uh, Tenji, takes her in. Tenji takes her in as a concubine. Um, but anyways, uh, that is the idea about Kaguya in the origins. So that was in the anime, by the way. So take a look. Uh, you can see Tenji and uh, Kaguya here. All right, so... As you can see, there's Lord Tenji, uh, you know, taking in Kaguya. So uh, this will be uh, how she bears children, right? This is how she bears Hagoromo and Hamura because of Tenji. Now, after this this time, you know, we we start to see, uh, you know, she's sharing love with Tenji, and you know, he's starting to fall for her, and obviously they have children, but he doesn't know it. He doesn't know it, and one thing he does know is that there's this struggle between his nation, the So Nation, and the Ka Nation. So there's these two nations that are always fighting against each other. And there's war is like, is almost imminent, you know? It's, it's almost like an all-out war about to happen. And the, he's trying to keep the peace. He's kind of, you know, a negotiator. He wants to do everything possible without actually engaging in battle, you know. Uh, if he can do that, you know, that would be better off. He thinks he's better off doing that, like a peaceful solution. Um, now, she does share uh, his, his uh, view on that. In fact, her ambition as well is to see a peaceful world, okay, a peaceful world. And so when she touches down uh, in the ninja world, obviously she finds you know, Tenji, so she finds this person who, you know, seeks peace like her, um, but at the same time, she doesn't see it that way. She sees these, these mortals just fighting each other, not really understanding each other. So she's kind of, you know, looking at the, the, the divine tree for guidance. You know, she's always looking up even at the sky, you know, at the sky and maybe even her own home, you know, for answers, you know. I really truly want this peace, uh, but you know, all this war around us, you know, and Tenji was one person that kind of, you know, helped her along, you know, like, I'm there with you, you know, we can get through this together. And Kaguya becomes pursued by the Ka Nation. Now, they attack her, and she shows them incredible power. 
and now they think she's a monster. And so the, she kills them, you know, not even, you know, trying to kill them, but she just, uh, you know, basically uh, protecting herself and ends up, you know, killing them. So now they're, they're really angry. Now they're going to go all out war. And so they're against her. And then Tenji turns on his own love. You know, we can't afford to go to war. So I must allow them to pursue Ka Kaguya. So they, he sends his own troops against Kaguya. And there was one person that always was loyal to Kaguya. And that was Ainu. And Ainu was this attendant. She's a girl. She, she always attended to Kaguya. And she's like an attendant to Kaguya and Tenji. But, you know, she's really loyal to her. And so she even protected her. You know, from these arrows being shot at her, you see this 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 image of them. So take a look here is where she's protecting her. So as you can see, you know, we see her uh, protecting her, and then later on, you know, they're they're she's trying to convince them. You know, she has children. Please, please, your child, uh, Lord Tenji, and then she gets shot in the stomach, and I knew dies right in front of, you know, Kaguya. And this is when she basically has had enough. She's had enough. She goes to the tree. She, she looks for something, you know, and it just comes to her. You know, the fruit just falls right to her. She takes it, she grabs it and eats it, and all that chakra, all that chakra is absorbed with her, and you see the Rene Sharingan awaken, and she just hovers above the sky, and the sky actually opens up. The sky opens up. You saw it in my intro, and this is when she calls forth the infinite Tsukuyomi, the infinite Tsukuyomi. So this is kind of, you know, a summary of this week's, this past week's chapter, uh, this past week's episode. But at the same time, it really makes sense because it's like she was seeking peace, but she, all she saw was war, okay? She had a few people that she cared for, but at the same time, as a whole, for the, for the, for mortals, okay, for humans, she saw a lot of war and she didn't think there was any, you know, answer, another answer. So the only answer for her was the divine tree. After all, that was her sole duty, you know, to protect the tree. And not only that, to eventually, you know, take its fruit. That was, you know, a supposedly a legend for her. And so she eats the fruit, she gains the immense power, and she puts them all in the infinite Tsukiyomi. Now... I believe that this is a peaceful solution. Yes, in this case, it is a peaceful solution. However, uh, as we all know, they, the bodies actually turn into Zetsus. So, in her eyes, it's peaceful, yes. But to them, you know, those, those people, I guess to only, uh, the only way for them to see it that way was to show them the infinite Tsukuyomi, show them the peaceful world, show them what peace means. Because I think when Madara did it, I think m many knew what peace was. But in this time, when this time, there was little peace. You know, there's war, constant uh, strife. So I think the infinite Tsukuyomi at this time was actually viable and actually justifiable. I think that it was the right choice. Uh, it was to show them, you know, this is how the world should be. And that's when she started her rule, her dominion. All right, so we talked about origins. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the, the second one that I just talked about is war and love. So obviously, you know, those two factions fighting each other and guidance from the tree. So we're on number four now, which is rule. So before we go into part four, which uh, I call rule or dominion, um, 
I want to share with you Kaguya's favorite thing. So Kaguya's favorite thing, uh, according to the data book, is the divine tree's fruit. Okay, yes, guys, the chakra fruit is her favorite thing. Now, originally, her sole duty was to protect it, and that's why she came to the world to begin with, okay? But if war was to break out and, you know, things were to get chaotic, okay, she would ask the tree for guidance, okay? And that is another thing. We see her lose, you know, someone uh, kind of, in, you know, caring for her, you know, she, she actually cried out to her, you know, she had children to protect. So this was the guidance she wanted. She, she asked for guidance for the tree. The tree gave her, you know, the chakra fruit. So that's why she ate it. So that is uh, my understanding of it at least. Um, now, when she ate the forbidden fruit, uh, it released true chakra. Okay, I already explained that. And its refined flavor only turned her into a slave who desired more and more power. Okay, now, if you guys remember Inuyasha, okay? Inuyasha, there is this really interesting episode called uh, Fateful Night in to Toginkyo. <laughs> Toginkyo was the, the name of the place, and there's this tree of human-faced fruits, okay? They're forbidden fruits, okay? And they're people that are, you know, who have died, who have been consumed by the tree, okay? And it's supposedly, there's this legend that if you eat this fruit, you will become a sage. However, we all know, we all know that... Uh, later on, the the elder sage tells us that it only makes you a slave to Niminka, the demon tree that, you know, bears this human fruit. So, in a way, this divine tree is kind of like Niminka in a way. Uh, it is divine, but only if you keep watch without eating its forbidden fruit. So, if you eat it then it can be very, very dangerous because it changes you completely. So Kaguya, after this time, kind of became possessed, possessed more and more by power. You know, the tree kept asking for more and more. And remember, when she has children, she gives the power to her children. So the tree wants that power back. So what does it do? It devours Kaguya. So that's the idea, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's just a little something to think about uh, when we're uh, talking about the divine tree. All right, so dominion or rule. Um, she uses her immense power to expand her dominion. Okay, so we see in the episode, you saw in my intro, where she, you know, gets the Rena Sharingan, she has her full powers, and at that time, she's ruling over everything. So, at that time, I believe she's starting to develop her powers more and more. Uh, all of her powers are magnified and then she's going off and she's going to explore other worlds and this is where we get into the Boruto film yes guys the Boruto film has the Kaguya's castle right Sasuke is in you know searching in Kaguya's castle this is kind of a remnant of Kaguya's dominion okay see a little castle you see one in the ice dimension you see one in the lava dimension you see one you know in the Bordeaux film so i'm going to share each of them with you so take a look
So yeah, guys, this is her and her dominion, you know, she's spreading her dominion, her rule over all uh, and spreading her rule. So this is when she's starting everything. So we could even tie in Momoshiki and Kenshiki at this time because they were her loyal subjects, okay? They were her loyal subjects, possibly in that dimension that we saw them in the Boruto film, or maybe another dimension, because we know we, they, they discover a new tree. The question is, does Kaguya know about it, and did she ask them to watch over it, and they betray her? And that's the idea of the infinite Tsukuyomi, is to build new warriors, you know, to fight against them. Now, why would she need them? Because if they eat the tree, they're going to gain power like Kaguya did. And I think it's quite possible that they stumbled on to a new tree and she wasn't aware of it. But she did become aware of it as a possessed uh, Kaguya. As a possessed Kaguya, but not as the original Kaguya before so obviously it gets a really confusing at times but i believe kaguya was aware of it because zetsu does explain dark zetsu does explain that there are these zetsu creatures and they become you know when you're in the infinite sukuyomi you become a zetsu and there's this war that they're preparing for Why they're wanting to, you know, create this infinite Tsukuyomi so you can fight against them. Now, it's all possession, like I said. The real Kaguya doesn't want war, but this possessed Kaguya does. And this is where it gets really uh, interesting. So, like I said, uh, she gives birth to Hagoromo and Hamura, okay? She disperses their chakra um, equally, supposedly. And then she wants it back, okay? She wants it back because the tree possesses her, okay? So the tree possesses her. Give back the chakra you've stolen from me. And it's also talking about Hamura and Hagoromo, so they fight her, okay? So they fight her in battle. But she's not aware of, you know, actually fighting her sons. She knows, but she's kind of trapped inside, you know, the actual ten tails. So they seal her away in the moon, okay? And then, eventually, uh, Hamura, you know, Hamura watches over the ghetto statue. But at the last moment, this is where it gets very interesting. At the last moment of that sealing, um, Black Setsu is created. And this is one of the last parts uh, I'm going to be talking about. So the last part I talked about was possession. Her desire to obtain chakra took control of her. Kaguya was lost. She possessed the ten tails and fought her sons in battle, like I said. She's sealed within the Chibaku Tensei and the moon where Hamura would guard over the ghetto statue. Now, in desperation, this creature escapes from Kaguya and Black Setsu is born. So, this kind of explains that Black Setsu is a possession of Kaguya from the tree okay so it's actually not the original kaguya it's but what became of her so and that's also what the data book explains now zetsu himself is an embodiment of kaguya's corrupted heart and soul as kaguya's heart and soul was possessed this creature was born out of desire for power conquest and of course violence um now, like I already explained, he's preparing for war, uh, he manipulates people like Obito and Madara, obviously. And then, the very interesting thing about Kaguya is her regret, okay? When she sees Naruto and Sasuke, she's crying, okay? We get this idea that she, was, she knows she's sealed away, but at the same time, she wasn't able to see them like she wanted to, okay? She saw them as a monster, you know, instead of... Kaguya as the mother, 
okay? So that's why she's crying to Naruto and Sasuke. Um, but I thought that was quite interesting because the real Kaguya's heart is kind of locked away and her former self is completely gone, okay? And that's the whole point of Black Zetsu. She's part of Kaguya, so she's it's needed to give her entire power, you know, control. But at the same time, that former self is gone forever. It's faded away. So this was one of the things that people were really upset with. So powerful, yet so weak. So powerful, yet so weak. And this is the last part of my discussion, guys. Uh, her inability to control her own power made her made a lot of people mad okay and I just explained it Blatsetsu is a part of her it became part of her it was a possession of the tree and her desire for more power now like I said her former self can no longer return so there's no return there therefore she needs Black Zetsu so that's my take on you know Kaguya uh, as a whole I hope you guys enjoyed my discussion